Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com, where that's all your sex information lives there live every day uh it is monday happy monday hey menace what's up how you doing i'm great how <clears throat> are you me. wow i had some coconut water just before i love you coconut know I'm, water. A, I'm obsessed i want it it's my favorite i love coconut water i can't give you anything to drink because I you're like oh on it. can i get a sip and then <laughs> I next ruined your lip. <laughs> it's like covered in lipstick i don't want it back Take oh it. i wiped it off Last no, time, there there was still like residue. Done, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry about that. that. I'm sorry, menace. Oh my god, today's Anyways. show. I'm really excited. We have adult entertainment performer Jessica Drake. We're going to be calling her in a little bit. She did these adult and she's an adult performer, and she also did these educational DVDs. As I'm showing the camera now, Jessica Drake's guide to wicked sex. Positions and she did these three DVDs. One was on anal sex, one is on fellatio, and one is on wicked sex. But my interns took the anal sex and the fellatio one, they were missing from the office. Imagine that. So I couldn't, I can't show those to you on camera because they're home watching those DVDs right now. My interns, but we're gonna be calling her. She's gonna be talking all about being an adult star and educating people on fellatio, anal sex, and wicked sex. So that'll be really fun. We are also going to be reading your emails that you send to feedback at sexwithemily.com. Some topics include not enjoying sex, the great hand job debate, and not having sex with your partner, plus sex in the news, and just plus of another bunch of other sexy stuff. Hey, Menace, what are you doing? I uh, just realized that we have a new computer and we don't even have Skype on it. Oh, so, so we have to call our guests and you have to set it up. Yeah, I got to set it up Okay, quick. cool. Well, we've got a poll that you got to vote on. It's still up. Do you like being dominated? A, yes, but only light stuff. B, yes, I'd be down for handcuffs and whips. C, yeah, bring on all this kinds of stuff. 
D, no, I'm not into that kind of stuff. So let us know what you're into because we did a show last week, I think, about um, being dominated. Maybe it was the week before about rough sex. We did a rough sex show. We found out a lot that Menace wants to be tied up. No. Oh, no. I want to be tied up. That was it. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to be tied up. And um, I haven't been tied up enough in my life. I just think that there's more that I need to do. And um, so that's what we got. And we also want to give a big shout out to Adam and Eve. They have a mobile site now that you can buy your sex toys online. So, I mean, on your phone, on your mobile phone, if you just, you know, you're hanging out and you're like, I really want, you can buy Jessica Drake's DVDs. Anything you want, toys, DVDs, you just go to coupon code. You use coupon code EMILY. You go to adamandeve.com. Use coupon code EMILY at checkout. You get three adult DVDs, a free gift, free shipping, free, free, free. You'll love it. Check out Adam and Eve. We love when you do that. You can also leave us a message anytime at 415-992-7392. Leave a message on our voicemail anytime, and we will answer your questions on the air. So, uh, Menace, how was your weekend? It was super fun to hang out with you Friday. I know. I mean, we had a blast <laughs> on Friday. That I know. Was so it was cool. so random. And but... I, I want to say thank you to your brother again. He showed me a good time. We we hung out at his hotel. Right. And uh, he was like at this VIP level and it was like open bar. You know me. I love it. I know. I'm like Menace yeah. should come. So I called Menace. I'm like, Menace, open bar. Get your ass over here. And I was like, yes. So <laughs> It was like 5 o'clock Friday. I'm like, uh-huh. open bar, baby. And I was uh, – I was so wasted that I was trying <laughs> to act normal in what everybody was around, but I couldn't help. But we were all wasted, so nobody yeah. would know that you were not – no I one's think, judging. But I was paranoid. I think people knew that I was effed up. Really? When I was trying to get food because I was moving so slowly. <laughs> and um, I was I was feeling that people were looking at me because oh, I, I had one paranoid. too many uh, Captain Morgan. You, you didn't seem that messed up to me when, I, when we really? left. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. I would know. I played it off cool. You you don't ever seem that you get quieter, I guess. But yeah, <laughs> but because I try to choose my words better, right? It takes me a while to uh, right to you know decode everything. But right. the rest of the weekend, I absolutely did nothing. <laughs> like when Friday I saw night? you, when I saw you on Friday, <laughs> I went home and I never left my. You never house. left. How'd you eat? I have food in my house. Oh, I'm not oh, like right. you. <laughs> I have everything I need in my house. Do you? Yeah, and I didn't leave till early this morning. Well, we wanted you to come back on Saturday night because we were partying still in the hotel, and they're like, "Where's Menace?" I'm like, "Okay." I know. I and I didn't get that message till like a couple it's hours okay. later. We just wanted you to come back and party. Yeah, I, my I brother was in the to. VIP level, and we had open bar and it was, open food. It, it was, was amazing. It was so fun. How was I love your when we do that. My weekend was really fun. I took my dog for a long walk and um, went to the. Corona Heights Dog Park, which is really cool. It's beautiful views of the city. And I worked and I went out. What I do? I hung out with friends, hung out with my brother. He left yesterday, which is sad, but it was awesome to uh-huh. see him. And I'm going home to Michigan for a week next week. I know. The the trip that you tricked me out of. Why? Oh, because you were going to come? They would love you to come. I would have I would have went. Remember, I offered to go and they're like, oh, you're like, oh, no, I'm not going. So then I made other plans. And then suddenly, going to once Vegas. I made once suddenly once I made plans, suddenly you're going. No, I'm man, just saying it's nothing a setup. to do with that. You never wanted me to go. I did want you to come. No, to, it's yes, fine. I did. Yes, whatever. I, did. I don't want to go now. You can come next Anyways, year. You can whatever. come next year. But but that's like my family's Christmas is the Thanksgiving. So we 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 have a lot of fun then together. Okay, fine. Yeah, it'll be fun. How was your weekend? So I don't you want to hang out with your cool brother or anything. I like know. That. I love that you love my brother because if you didn't like him, you'd tell me too. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, he's really cool. No, I I stayed. At the house, there's a new television show people should be watching. It's called uh, How to Make It in America. There's a lot of sex scenes and stuff like that. Oh, really? It's the replace- is it reality or no? No, no. It's a replacement for Entourage. It's really good. Oh, and HBO. It's all set in New York, like New York hipsters, high society, all mixing cool. together. It was, it's really good. On like HBO? It. Yeah. It's on HBO. I assume because you said a replacement for Entourage. Yeah. And then what else? I watched um, for the very first time. And I can't believe I admitted it to people because it's supposed to be that one of the greatest movies ever is Swingers. Oh, my God. One of the greatest movies ever. 
Um, no. Maybe it's kind of dated now. Yeah, now I'm like, uh. Yeah, when it came out, it was really like. I couldn't funny. tell what time period they were in. It was like the 90s, I think, right? Like mid 90s? Yeah, when probably when swing dancing, swing dancing was, yeah. was big and stuff like that. And I'm like, why are they talking like that? Right. Why? Why are they dancing? I, I can't to swing dancing. I, I know, I, but there's some great yeah. scenes when he obsessively calls her her voicemail. Yeah, yeah. Hey, like he gets, he gets her number. What's her face? Um, yeah, some good that blonde chick. actress. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. what's her name? Um, oh yeah, um, Heather Graham. Heather Graham. Thank you. Um, and he's like, "Hi, yeah, it's me. I just met you at the bar." Yeah, and he calls her back. Uh, yeah, so I'm just calling you back. Uh, sorry, I don't think this is working out. Like he has a whole relationship <laughs> yeah. with her, and she's like, "Don't ever call me again." That's yeah. funny. That's a funny part. Or no, it was annoying. Yeah, that was good. But, but they were like else. on the phone. It was like pre cell phone, right? Yeah, man, it was it was bad though. <laughs> I didn't really like it. He didn't like it. How'd you decide to watch it? I feel bad it? for all the swinger fans because I never watched it. Oh, and, and you just found um, it. You know, I will make a disclaimer. I'm sponsored by Roku now. And uh, so I got these little streaming video players. Oh, cool. And it's amazing. So What's I get Roku? to watch all these movies. It's, I've seen uh, the ads. It's, little, it's this tiny little box that plugs into your television and you can stream all the services like Netflix, Hulu Plus. And... Oh, I want to be sponsored by them. You want to? Yeah. All right. Let's hook that shit up. It's basically, uh, yeah. It's like other service that you, services that you had. Got it. Just legit movies. <laughs> Got it. Legit movies. It's like, uh, yeah, exactly. My porn box. Um, cool. Okay. Well, uh, fun. Fun weekend. I'm going to be watching TV this week. Mm-hmm. I decided it's my big week for TV. It's kind of like hunkering down. It's kind of like winter here, it feels like. Mm-hmm. Winter's coming in, and I'm going to um, stay home and yeah. watch, a lot of, watch a lot of TV. I planned out a lot of my uh, Vegas trip, though. You did? What yeah. are you going to do? Just look for like places to eat. And oh, stuff okay. Like that. Cool. That would be looked, fun. And you know what I've never also never done in what? Vegas is, uh, you know, uh, I never went and seen the Tigers at MGM. Oh, yeah. I always do the, all the doll club stuff. I don't care about that You don't anymore. like the strippers and all that stuff. Yeah. You're not into that stuff. No. Some guys but are, I some did, guys are I did spend like three grand a night going to strip clubs. You spent three grand? Yeah. How? How? Because we went to, from strip clubs from 8 a.m., Oh, no, 8 p.m. to like 10 a.m. Last time you were in Vegas? Last time when I went out to strip clubs and stuff. That's a lot of money on strippers, but I'm sure they appreciated it. Yeah. So that was like putting money in their panties? Yeah, I never went and got a private dance or anything like that. No. That's just like straight up at the— $3,000. Guys have spent a lot of money in strip clubs. Um, I think it's dumb, but it was a a $3,000. I was with my friend who has a lot of money, and it was his brother's birthday. Oh, it was his money. So he— each it wasn't gave your us, three thousand dollars. No, be clear. he gave us three thousand dollars each to go spend at the strip club. Oh my god, I love this guy. Yeah, so we just went. I'd go that. shopping asap. Yeah, that's what I would do with my three thousand. But I guess I'm not the strip club girl. But I've been to strip clubs and yeah. I, they're fun. I've gotten I've gotten lap dances. It's kind of hot. I talked to a lot of strippers and they said that they hate when women come in. Why? Because we take like away it. the energy. They they say that all they do is sit back and talk shit about you. Which I totally – I could totally see that. I never like, do. Like just I, judging. I know you, know you that are an anomaly. Cool. You're not right. like every other girl. I know that. <laughs> right? I and never talk say, shit about fellow women. They said that uh, all they do is sit back, talk crap, and then they don't spend They don't spend any money. Oh, that's true. We probably don't spend as much money. Yeah. So they go uh, – we're not excited when women come in like you would think that we would be. Yeah. But the guys are. Sometimes they bring their girlfriends and it's a whole yeah. thing. So you're going to go to the strip clubs this time in Vegas? No. No. You said no. you're doing more adult things like seeing the tigers. Yeah. I'm going to see the tigers. I'm going to go shoot guns. Like a, Oh, I'm shooting. Uh, yeah. Did we yeah. talk about this? Is that we? You said you wanted to do I, it. I want to shoot guns. Yeah. I never shot guns. And then I want to go. I've never been on the roller coaster at New York, New York. Okay. I want to do that. Fun. Fun. Yeah. Take pictures. You will. Uh, then I will go to some – I will go to a nightclub maybe. You gotta go to a nightclub in Vegas. Yeah, my yeah. friends they all DJ at the nightclub, so oh, that'd I'm sure be fun. You're gonna go. have a blast, even though you won't be in them. Michigan eating turkey with me. But I know. Whatever. We'll next time, next year, they're gonna want you to come next year for sure. Especially after my brother, you know, gives the menace report. Yeah, I, dude, I freaking love your brother. I know. <laughs> can you just live here? <laughs> He's so funny. Tell him I'll make a trade. He is. You hope- can go home to Michigan for a while, <laughs> and then he can sit here. Okay, with me. How that'd about be that? great. He is really funny. I know. The too bad. So my brother's show. The audio wasn't great, so they got the audio up, but it's we got to fix the audio on it. I don't know. Got to run through a compressor. My brother people. like really revealed a lot of stuff, so mm-hmm. we're trying to fix that show. But um, okay, we've got some sex in the news. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Yeah. So I got breaking dawn sex scene is all close ups. Kristen Stewart says. 
There is so much hype surrounding the Breaking Dawn Part 1 sex scene between Edward Cullen and Bella Swan that we probably won't ever be able to stop writing about it. The fans demand it. Uh, so it's funny because it's not in the book. It's totally what you imagine in, in those chapters without it. Whatever. It's a beginning to end sex scene. Yeah, whatever. It's a sex scene. I don't even know what that is. I mean, I know what a sex scene is, but what's Breaking Dawn Part 1 sex scene? <laughs> it's part of the Twilight series. I know it's Twilight, but okay, whatever. What so. do you mean? Okay, I mean, I so if is, you but... actually watch television, you would know what they're talking about, why there's so much hype. Because in the trailer, oh, it's thank you. like um, the guy, he's like on top of her and he's holding the back of the bed. And the guy's like straight yoked out, meaning he's like really in shape. So he has all these muscles and you can just see him like thrusting into the bed. Like, oh, wow. That's a quick scene. So that's why – because it's like a teeny bopper. Oh, Thing so that's why they're making a big deal about it. If it's a teeny bopper thing, why do they have to make it all sex now? Because in the movie, I haven't seen any of them, but I just know the plot line for this is he um, impregnates her, and that's all about like her having a baby. And oh, okay, stuff. got it. Well, it's all close ups. They say you vampires, you better wear your Jimmy hats. Exactly, it's all close ups. Is the is the is the punchline here? Yeah. So whatever. Okay. And they're, they're a real-life um, boyfriend and girlfriend, Right. They've too. been together a while. They'll break up yeah. soon. When you're that young, how long are they going to stay together? They're going to get married and be happy, live happily yeah. ever for No way. Can I, uh, can I just say something? Yes, please. And I, uh, you know, I've been so excited about this Zoe Deschanel breakup that I forgot to prove a point. <laughs> okay. That Zoe Deschanel just started her own television show right before the breakup starring her. Okay. Where she gets more into the spotlight, she her television show starts. What happens? Breaks up with her man. Just proves. And Menace again, thinks that all women, when they get successful, dump their man. They do. They Men do. dump their women too. I don't no, totally agree. Not like this. Well, who is who is she dating? Ben Gibbard. He's the lead singer of uh, Def Cab for Cutie. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh. And they were married. They were married. Well, yeah. She got married young. How old is she? Uh, I don't know. Okay. That's young to get married. People don't get married till you're thirty. Really? Seriously, yes. She's don't in her early thirties. Yeah. Is she? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine that she got married then. But whatever. Now she's getting See? divorced. Just she's wait as long as you can. Don't su- get married if you're in your twenties for sure. She got more successful. That's not why she dumped him. He probably got jealous and threatened. Men's like oh, penises God. shrink when their wives get when their wives get more successful. Their no. penises shrink. Yeah, it, they do. Well, that's how they feel. They feel emasculated by strong mm-hmm. women, and then they start being prissies women. around the house. And then you got to divorce that you're their strong ass. women. No, it's not. That. Yeah, yeah. Just kinda. because you have a good job doesn't make you a strong woman. Yeah, well, I mean, she's strong. She's independent. She's pulling in more money than he is. He feels insecure and emasculated, like he has no dick left, and then he dumps her. Well, she I guess dumps him. I'm the anomaly then because I would root for that. I'm like, yeah, you go, go make I know, that money. I know you are an anomaly to that, and I think I would date guys who would be an anomaly to that too if they were. You know, I would love to date a guy who would be like, I'm so cool with you making all this money. Not that it's happened yet, but um, when it happens, it'll be awesome. Okay, same sex change same sex change survey is now tax deductible. So if you're getting a sex change, it can be tax deductible. The IRS recently notified the tax court that it would start allowing expenses from sex reassignment surgery to be ta- tax deductible. Each year, around 1,000 people undergo the surgery, which is a five-figure expensive, often isn't covered by insurance, and until now would require you to wage war against IRS if you believed that you having a gender identity disorder was a medical condition and that it was necessary that you treat it. So now they're covering it. That's awesome. That that is big news. Yeah. A woman was born male. This woman, I can't even pronounce her name, Rhiannon. She was born male, had to deal with it for almost a decade, and the IRS had originally turned down her case. Now that the decision has gone into effect, she's mostly been reimbursed for medical expenses except for the breast augmentation surgery. Mm, yeah, they still won't do that. They still won't do that. Okay. Kat Von D says, Jesse James cheated on me with 19 women. I read that this Why morning. Why is that a shock? That's not a surprise. He cheated on uh, – what's her face with all those women too? Um, mm-hmm. What's her name? Uh, um. Sandra Bullock. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. He cheated on her with like 19 women. People don't, Leopard doesn't change his spots. A man cheats once, he's going to cheat again, oftentimes. He seems like a perennial, like, cheater. 
But uh, it's weird that he would do that right after such bad press. I know. You'd think he'd be like, but he probably never thought that he did anything wrong. So Kat Von D claims to cheat on 19 women during their toxic relationship. This according to a rambling confessional she just posted on her Facebook page. Kat never mentioned specifically if that's why their relationship ended, but she does say she deserves a big fat I told you so from everyone. You were all more right than you'll ever know. Jesse's not talking, but we're told the two of them have been broken up for months, which makes their the new revelation a little weird. Don't know if it's just coincidental, but her show was also given the axe a few months ago, so it could be a grab for attention. Okay, people, if you're dating a guy who cheated so fiercely on his wife, like, and then you date him five mm-hmm. minutes later, you think he's all fixed and better and not going to cheat again? No, men, they cheat once, they're going to cheat again. I'm not surprised by that at I, all. I was so disappointed because I love Kat. I love Kat Von D. She's a sweetheart. I don't know her. Met her several times. And um, I was just like, why are you kidding with this guy? Why? Like, I don't What's know. so attractive about him? I don't get it. Maybe he is, He was the bad boy. She's actually pretty young. Yeah. Kat Von D is not um, – I think she she's still in her 20s. Really? Yeah. Early – late 20s. Okay. And then, so she's just like, oh, he's a bad boy, motorcycle builder and blah, blah, blah. I can change him like all those young oh, girls Oh, women things. always yeah. think they can change your guy. And let me mm-hmm. just tell you that nobody changes unless they want to change. And if they they have to work on it, and so I'm not surprised at all. That's all I got to say about that. It's so funny if he's if he's hooking up with 19 girls, you think sounds like Tiger Woods. Yeah, you'd think one of these chicks. He must have them all unlocked because you think one of these chicks would just go running to the press to get some money. I know he's not you even know? that attractive. Or he must have some kind of ladies' man quality where they don't rat him out. You know? Yeah, crazy. Okay, J Lo has a new boy toy. Oh, She's really? a new man in her life. Just a few weeks after divorcing Mark Anthony, J Lo has taken up with backup dancer. Why do these chicks always take up with backup dancers? They're good rebounds. They're backup on the dancer road with them. Casper Smart. Their budding relationship is nothing serious so far, but J Lo already married one backup dancer. So mm-hmm. what's attracted her to him? Besides his facial hair, obviously, he's popular with the ladies because he goes shirtless. Didn't like Britney Spears need her backup dancer and like yes. everyone? J Lo has J Lo and Madonna. Jer- Jayla already married when we backed up. That was like before Mark years Anthony. ago. Yeah. Okay. He got so. like eleven million dollars from not to ever say anything about her. And he never did. He never did. I well, wouldn't if I got eleven million. Eleven million dollars. I'm like Jayla. Got eleven hundred at this point. I'd be like, I know. Seriously. Um, okay. So uh, Michael Bublé is that how you say it? Bublé. Bublé. I don't know. Bublé. Calls Kim Kardashian a bitch. <gasps> How could you do that? I don't know. During his November 8 performance on the iHeartRadio live concert, the Canadian singer announced to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special guest. Please welcome Kim Kardashian to the stage. But he revealed he was kidding and says, Nad, just effing with you. That bitch isn't coming on my stage. Really? So he just effed with her. He effed. He just, yeah, that bitch. And then Mariah Carey was taking shots at her, too. At a press conference last week, the singer made a comment that seemed time to Kim's decision to file for divorce. And she says, I'm a real person. I'm not going to put on a fake face for Hollywood, she explains when talking about her life with husband Nick Cannon. Sometimes we make each other mad. That's why we aren't divorced after four months. So mm-hmm. I guess that was a, a little dig. A little dig, a little dig to Kim Kardashian, whatever. She's making millions. She doesn't give a shit what anyone <laughs> says about her. Hell no. Hell's no. Hell's to the no. Okay. So we've got some emails now, unless you've got any of your own sexy news to add to my Sex situation. Sexy news, here. anything. Oh, uh, Bieber's going to be taking the paternity oh, test soon. Oh, that's big. Yeah? I wonder if he's going to be a father. I don't know, but it would be so awesome if he was. We talked about this last week, that apparently this woman has already claimed that someone else was the father. So it doesn't seem likely. You yeah, know what I mean? why does Bieber... Why is Bieber even taking the He's test? probably did sleep with her, but he's probably afraid that he could be the father, so. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I don't think it, we would ever really know the truth. Right. I think it'd be like some CIA cover-up. Yeah, exactly. You're right. He's got enough money to cover that stuff up. Okay, let's move into some emails. Dear Emily, I've just recently started having sex. I thought it was supposed to feel wonderful. It feels like mm-hmm. nothing to me. Help. What am I doing wrong? Thanks a bunch, Valerie from Destin, Florida. Um, the truth is, sex gets better with time. Uh, first time I had sex, not great. First few times I had sex, not great. Sex wasn't great for a few years after I started having sex. There are positions to explore. 
You can explore things like rough sex, rough sex, slow sex. You have to explore and find out what you like, Valerie. So I would not be bummed out right now. It's important that you feel comfortable with the person you're having sex with also. I don't know what kind of people you're having sex with. Um, but also, do you know your own body? Do you know what makes you feel good? Do you know how to make yourself orgasm? Have you masturbated? Have you spent time figuring out your own body? Because sex isn't as enjoyable until you start taking charge of the situation and you're with a guy and you're like, okay, this is what I like. This is how I like to move. But it takes time. It's not the kind of thing like you think that you start having sex and it's just to feel amazing. But it really – you have to fi- figure out what positions feel good to you. And it, practice makes perfect. And make sure your clitoris is being stimulated because most women need their clitoris stimulated. You can have him play with it. You can play with it um, while you're on top or bottom. And um, if you just lost your virginity, yeah, you just be with someone you're comfortable with and that you can practice with. Yeah, it's not going to be amazing. Do you think sex was amazing the first time you had sex, the first few years? I mean, probably for a guy it's different. Uh, No. I thought it was amazing with the second person I was with. I thought it was good. Right. The first person I was was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. Right. It gets better. So – yeah, the first person I was that, I remember even being like, like blaming him, like thinking like, why isn't this better? It's probably his fault. But I just didn't know what I was doing. Oh, what? you were putting all the blame on him. I remember talking to friends being like, I can't believe it. it's not that good. <laughs> how and long did it last? Two and a half years. No, how long did it last the first time? Uh, the first time I had sex? Uh-huh. So funny. I just got asked about this the other day when I lost my virginity. I was 17. I was dating this football football player in high school, and I waited 11 months before sleeping with him. And I finally slept with him on his brother's like old ratty waterbed. <laughs> and um, I think that it lasted maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Is that a lot? Amazing. I don't think it was his. It wasn't his first time. It was my first time. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, and I don't. I remember thinking it was like a big deal, but it didn't feel like particularly great or anything. And then you times. were in love after. No, I wasn't. Actually, it was the second guy I dated after him that I was with for two and a half years that I blamed for being bad bed, but I don't think I knew what I was doing. Yeah. So it takes a while. That's what I got to say to you, Valerie. Okay. Dear Emily and Menace, some guys really like, okay, this is about the hand job debate, which we have serious. A- serious. It's a new one about the hand job debate. Someone's going back and listening to old shows because we sort of put it to rest, but I think the hand job debate will never die. All so right. let's hear what he has to say. Some guys really like a hand job that's just a hand job, but these guys are really in the minority. They have, in a sense, a fetish for hand jobs. The average guy likes a woman's hand on his dick as much as he can get it, but if the guy had to choose between one or the other, he'd prefer her mouth. Having said that, if a woman is enthusiastically giving head and she's really enjoying her time down there, she should also take her mouth off the guy's penis and lick and suck the shaft, the balls, or prinium or whatever, and meanwhile rub his penis with her hand. And sometimes she'll just need to come up for air and rest her neck and meanwhile use her hands. Mm. So really, the answer to the great hand job debate is that you're both right. Hands and mouth alternating or used at the same time makes for a great hand job blow job. I've always said that. Maybe we should invent a different term. Would dick job be better? Also, remember that hands can generate more pressure and friction than the mouth. If she doesn't know what she's doing or she doesn't know what he likes, she might hurt him or make him uncomfortable. However, if she knows how to use her hands to please him, she may be able to finish him off faster, better, or stronger with her powerful little fist stroking away. Have fun. Hugs from Delicious. Delicious. Yeah. It's delicious. So Menace and I have had an age-old debate about hand jobs, and I still think I'm right, that a hand job is a nice thing to add into your sexual repertoire, and it doesn't have to be the only thing you do, but hand jobs can be fun for all involved. I've always said a solo hand job from beginning to end. Is not good. Is not good. It's useless. I disagree. Over It's fellatio. good to throw your mouth in sometimes. Yeah, maybe you choose fellatio, but women can give a killer hand job too. Lots of lube, both hands, different positions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we should call our guest now, the sexy Jessica Drake. Right. She is an adult performer, and um, let's give her a call. Here's her number. Okay. Right there. All right. The first one. Try the first one. So Jessica Drake has done educational videos. She's an adult performer. She did these video, these DVDs called The Guide to Wicked Sex Positions Basic. And then she did one on fellatio and one on anal sex. She's been in tons of adult films. And she, um, yeah, my intern stole the the anal one and the fellatio one. So I haven't been able to watch it. But she, these are from Wicked Pictures. She's a public speaker, Playboy radio personality, and a Wicked Pictures contract performer, writer, director. She's the creator of Jessica, Jessica Drake's Guide to Wicked Sex. It's a new line of DVDs to enhance your sexual growth. Damn it. I don't hear anything. Okay. Oh, do you think it's connected to the computer? Oh, no. It's new. 
Oh no. Hello? Oh, please. Don't have this happen. Uh... And the next one she's doing is about female masturbation, which I think is a great DVD to do because women kind of masturbate the same way, just like men, and there's like different things that you could do that would make them feel better. Should we call her from the speaker phone on the cell phone, or would that not be good? Uh, yeah, I guess do that for now. Okay. I'll just put it on speaker. That, that's pretty ghetto, but whatever. This is ghetto, but we're, we're ghetto. <laughs> All right. And I'll tell them to, uh, I'll tell Should I just, um. Yeah, just put it on speaker for right now. We're going to have to tell. Hello? Uh, Hello, Jessica. Oh, perfect. Oh, did you get Okay, yeah, we were trying to call you on Skype, but now we're just calling you from the cell. Um, hi, how are you, Jessica? Thanks for being a guest on the show. Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my God, it's great to have you. You have such a sexy voice, and you have sexy Thank DVDs you. and sexy, sexy life. I was just talking about your DVDs that you sent to us, which are awesome. Jessica Drake's Guide to Wicked Sex, The Guide to Fellatio, Guide to Anal, and Guide to Positions, and my intern stole them from me. I didn't even have a chance to watch the fellatio and the anal. They're gone from my office. <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny because those are the two most popular of the three. Um, that, that's why they were uh, definitely involved in the first run because when I was doing the seminars, I sort of do them on request as to, you know, w- whatever the store or the venue thinks would go over better. And consistently straight across the board, it was, well, how about anal sex? Well, how about blowjobs? How about fellatio? How about, <laughs> you know, repeatedly. Um, I also just shot... Uh, Jessica Drake's Guide to Wicked Sex Female Masturbation. And my editor just brought me a screener about two hours ago. And he says it's the best one so far. And I don't know if he's a little bit biased. <laughs> all, all women, um, I'm not really too sure. But he's really happy with it. So I'm going to be watching it tonight to make my first round of edit notes. So I can't wait to see it myself. Oh, my God. I'm so excited for it. Because I was just saying that I think that women that women do, I mean, that there there is a way to, you know, women kind of masturbate in the same way. But I'm sure that the women also seem to need to learn a lot more about their own bodies. And it, I'm sure it helps to have a DVD. What kind of things are in there, you think? What are some top tips for women about masturbating? Well, with, without being um, too clinical, because although I provide some very factual information on anatomy and how things work, I don't like to try to sound like I'm a doctor because I'm not. Um, Instead, I want to educate women about their bodies and then maybe give them some ideas on how to best explore themselves so that they can come up with what pleases them the best. Because like everything else in sex, I do not think that it's A plus B equals C. I think that we are all variables of our own equation. And what one woman likes is going to be not enough for another woman or maybe too much for another woman. Exactly. Um, I think that it's all a matter of being confident enough to find what it is within yourself that's going to help you be a better lover to yourself and you learn how to masturbate or in doing that you become more comfortable with your own sex and so that you are more likely to be able to convey to a partner what it is you want from them in the long run. So, I mean, I just like being women really comfortable with the idea uh, and opening up, pardon the pun, but opening up to to new things and really having, having confidence in themselves because that's where it all starts from. Exactly. It is all about confidence. I just read an email from a listener who was saying that um, that she just had sex for the first time and she's like, what's the deal? It didn't feel that good. And I was like, you got to you got to learn your own body. And sometimes it's not that easy for women. You know, you really have to take the time. Yeah, I think it, I think it is a really important thing. And that also sort of is a great segue into how I even came to do these in the first place. Um I was noticing a shift in the demographic of people that were coming to see not just me, but all the wicked girls in our appearances because, you know, we do conventions, we do adult bookstores and, you know, all kinds of things all around the world. And originally, guys would come and see me and it would be a super long line of guys, the occasional and somewhat uncomfortable woman. And through the years, I've noticed that not only have more women 
began to be comfortable, but because of the trendiness of the more boutique sex store, more couples-friendly, um, women are going there by themselves. And they're going there with bachelorette parties and their girlfriends or their sisters. I've even seen mother-daughters be there together. Yeah. And, and they're seeking out new information, new products, new things for themselves. And so in turn, they started asking me questions at these appearances that I was doing. Like, I'm just sitting at a table, um, selling pictures, signing autographs, giving away free posters. And they're asking me, well, how do I give a better blowjob? You know, how can I have anal sex? My husband really wants it. I don't know what I'm doing. So I started talking to them. Right. And that, huh, that's that great. Seminars. You know, I started doing seminars for these bookstores. I would either do them right before, before signings, you know, and just have them be one, women only, or I'd do them on a different day. And then after the seminars, the women were like, well, yes, that was great, but you have a DVD to back it up. Oh, my God, that's so smart. It's I, I get asked those questions all the time. So what are some, let's go through it. So what are your some of your guides to fellatio for women? What are some tips, some of your top tips well, for women? You know, I I think that top tips for women would be the answers to the poll that I put out the hundreds of men. I asked them what the three most important things for them were. And I'm going to list them from number three to number one. Okay. Number three was no teeth. I think that's a really obvious one. Right. Um, number two was lots of if it's a blow job or lube if it's a hand job. But the number one thing that guys said was that they want their partners to be enthusiastic. Yeah. So that that shows me that they want someone much like we do, they just want someone that's really into what they're doing. And if a woman lacks technique, she's making up for that in just a willingness to to try, you know, to like what she's doing, to really get into it and attempt to please her partner. Yeah. And I think that works the same for women and men. Um, during my seminars, though, I talk about things like less deep throating, uh, how to relax both sets of those muscles in your throat, and, you know, a couple of tricks, maybe different positions that you can get yourself in to, to do it maybe a little bit more comfortably, with the understanding that not every woman's going to be able to do it anyway. Um, and also things like different hand techniques, um, how to give any size man a two-handed hand job, um, because I think it's sort of when guys get uncomfortable and lose some confidence because they might be less endowed, I sort of teach women how to complement these, uh, dare I say, shortcomings um, <laughs> that some men might think that they have, you know, because no one wants to think, well, I'm going to give a hand job to a smaller guy, so I'm going to use two fingers as opposed to my whole fist. Right. I can show women how to, I can show women how to use both hands, you know. Uh, That's amazing. That's, uh, You're like a magician. <laughs> You know, really, it's sleight of hand. Um, and as far as the anal, I think one of the most striking things that I've ever had happen to me, uh, a woman came up to me at a seminar um, that was fellatio or sex with a wicked woman. It was not an anal theme seminar. And she said, I think something's wrong because um, I can't have anal sex the way that you guys do it on camera. Oh. Uh, but What's wrong with me? Um, my husband was really wanting to try anal sex, and I want to do it for him, um, but it just wouldn't work, and it caused me a lot of pain, and it just wouldn't go in. What's wrong with me? I'm like, first of all, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, I, I mean, it was I, I was concerned for her that she would even think that. And I said, look, what you guys don't see, I mean, it's movie magic. What you're not seeing is prep work. What you're not seeing is the warm-up. Because when the cameras aren't rolling, that's when we're getting ready for all of this. Exactly. And at that time, I realized how truly important it is to incorporate more of that. When I shoot a movie, you see the working up, and you see the fingers beforehand, and you see the a few inches in, and then it's not in for a while. Like You see all that. And I think that that really made a great impression on me because I want to give them a more realistic view I mean, even though I do things that might be a bit more extreme in some of my movies, I enjoy anal sex, GPs, group sex, that type of thing. 
I want to show them that it is not a, okay, let's do this, and it's in. Right. You know? Good. That's good um, because people do learn a lot from porn. That might be the only sex they've ever seen. So I think it's great you're putting out these DVDs and telling people that, no, this is really what happens. Because I think people always think things are wrong. What's wrong with me? Why can't I have anal sex? You're right. They're like, and you need lots of lube, and you start small, start with a finger, start with yeah. your tongue. Something like and that. also, you know, some, something that I've told some women, and as disappointing as it may be to some guys, there are some women that will never like anal sex. And those women shouldn't have anal sex. Exactly. You, you know, it's, it, it's a simple fact. And I, I did incorporate that a bit into my um, female masturbation that I just shot because I did have some women that said they really enjoy either anal stimulation of some kind or even anal penetration. And I think that it's really a great way to become comfortable with anal play before you try it with a partner. Right. You know, that way you, you know your body better. Exactly. So do you recommend any sex toys for that? Or what do you recommend women do if they want to explore anally before they're with their partner? You know, um, for branding purposes at this time, I don't re- recommend a specific anal sex toy, but I definitely recommend trying with fingers, smaller vibrators, smaller butt bugs on the market right now. There are some really amazing high-end kits of toys. And they have, um, I got one for the anal instructional that I did. It has a series of butt bugs. And it starts with a very small one, not much bigger than a woman's finger, and gradually works its way up. And they're all tapered, of course, like the anal toys should be. And then I also incorporate even um, anal, not beads, but like anal beads that are all attached together. They're silicone. They're a silicone toy that has uh, round components. And, um, I mean, I think it's really important to experiment before you're having anal sex with a partner so that you can sort of figure out what you like before you're to that point. Exactly. That's a great... I never never really thought about that, that you could do it on your own. I mean, I know you can, but I don't know many women. Like, I think that a lot of women have fear around it, and men have fear around it. So it is good to explore on your own. That's good. And then, so do you... In the female masturbation one and all these, you're in them, right? You're actually in the videos. Well, here's the deal. Um, and it was a big decision in the beginning because I've known that I've wanted to do these for about, I'd say, a good two years, maybe a year and a half. And I pitched them to Wicked. I did a lot of thinking about whether or not I would be having sex in them. I decided not to have sex in them because I think that it detracts from what I'm trying to get across as an educator. Um, I didn't want to mix two different types of people that would be buying the instructionals. I want to appeal to a market that is open to receiving new information sexually necessarily people that are strictly fans of my heart movie. Um, of course, those definitely do coincide, um, but I wanted to make these where I had to be creative control. So, I write them, I direct them, narrate them. That's I amazing. Them, I cast them, I do the set direction, the art direction. I, uh, I have Brad Armstrong help me with some of the art in it, but I'm 100% in control. I noticed that when I direct feature movies for Wicked where I'm having sex in them, inevitably at some point during the sex scene, I'm thinking about the rest of my day in production. And I don't want to do that. Right, that makes sense. You know, and then when I'm directing, it's better for me in this instance to keep those two things separate. Interestingly enough, I've only had one person write me and say, oh, I'm really disappointed that you're not having sex with me. So, I mean, I think it's a good idea for me. Not that I'm trying to stop doing movies where I have sex. Quite the contrary. I'm just trying to sort of branch out because I feel a need. I feel a need for what I'm doing. There here. is a need for what you're doing. I mean, I get questions about this all the time. Fellatio, anal sex, positions. I mean, that's all we talk about on the show. So I think it's great that you have a DVD where people can actually, like, watch and learn. And I love the idea of the female masturbation one. When does that come out? Well, it's, it's I've just been given You the just got it, yeah, today. Oh, uh, 
Um, I leave tomorrow for Australia, which I'm really sorry. That's why we were having so much difficulty scheduling this interview. Um, my schedule has been absolutely insane, and I know yours has too. Um, I'm watching my screener tonight. I'm making my edit notes. I'm doing some ADR work, some voiceover work for it tomorrow morning before I jump on a plane for Australia. Okay. I would expect... If it's not out in December, it will be out in January. Okay, got it. Well, you have to send me a copy that I'm going to keep steal from my interns. They don't. They don't. I'm going to keep oh, it from I them will. so they don't take it. Oh, and then, and then you also teach seminars, right? So, how can people find out about you and your seminars? Well, I'm just launching. We're doing a soft launch right now for the website that goes along with the series. It's called Guide to WickedSex.com. We, um, I, I put articles on there. I write about different topics. We have different topics for discussion every month. Um, people can leave comments on it. I have a calendar. I definitely have some things in the works for next year, uh, seminar-wise. And eventually I will be doing one live chat seminar each month for free on guide3dsex.com. It's not a paying site. It's just a place to go to learn more about the series and, and That's really great. Start, start a conversation about it. Okay. This is great. Well, we got to stay in touch. I want to check out your new DVDs, and we're going to have all this on our information on our website. And I hope you have a great trip to Australia, and thanks for sharing these, and I'm going to get them back from my intern so I can learn something thing or two well, from you. I really... I really appreciate you having me on the show. And um, everyone can follow me at twitter.com slash Drake, And you can also see more of me at jessicadrake.com and wicked.com. Awesome. I know. And you're hot and sexy and your voice is amazing. And I know your body's amazing and all that stuff too, but it's great talking to you. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Have a good trip to Australia. Thanks so We'll talk to you Bye. soon. Bye. I'm very proud of you. Why? You've, we had a technical problem. <laughs> and you thought of a way to get around it. Look at you. I, I It's so easy. It's crazy. Why don't we just do that from now on? Uh, I think it worked, too. I used my cell phone it there. It sounded good, yeah. She's cutie. Look at her picture. What? Yeah, she's good looking. I got I a picture of her on camera. Sex with her, you don't want to sex with her? No. Um, I think she's hot, and I think it's really cool. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you some highlights of that for me. Okay. If you'd like to know. I think that porn's amazing, right? I'm a huge porn fan. I think it's super fun. But if people only watch porn and that's how they get their information, for example, they're like, why doesn't my butt, why anal, why is anal sex not so easy for me as it looks for you in porn? Like she was giving an example or how they perform oral sex. I mean, porn, you have to remember, is designed to look good. And to, it's, it's, a, it's a visual medium. And so they do things in porn that is not necessarily how you should do things in real life or how things look in real life. And so I think it's great that she's doing educational DVDs and saying, yeah, that's how you have anal sex in the movies, but this is how you really have anal sex. I think that's an important service. How long is that instructional video again? Why? No, I was just wondering. 75, I don't know, half hour maybe? Why? Uh, okay. Hour? I was just wondering how long she goes in depth about it. I don't why because you think it, you don't need to do that much information. I don't know. It's probably about maybe an hour, do. forty-five maybe minutes. Anal sex is a huge question that we get asked all the time, and it's, just so you know, she, we didn't get into that much, but you should start use lots of lube. Start with fingers. Start with tongue if you're with someone. Fingers like pinky fingers. What's up with you and the tongue? Lick the anus first. Get it all wet, and then stick your what? pinky in. See, this is where we disagree. <laughs> well, you would never lick an anus. Would you stick your finger in an anus? Yes, but you never go ask the mouth, dude. Some people do. Like, why? You are so, like... Or you can use saliva. Just use lots of lube and use your finger. But some people like to lick. I'm, you what? promote ask the mouth more than anybody. I do actually, not promote ask the mouth. You're the I'm only just person saying. that I know that promotes ask the mouth. Some people like it. Some people like asked mouth. I'm just saying that that's a way to start. Or you could start small. You always start small. Start with a pinky mm -hmm. finger. Yeah. I'm still trying to get over your asked mouth comments. And then I think it's also good that she gives guides to positions into fellatio. Because women, you know, we could use how. I think she should do one guide to cunnilingus gets you next. Because God knows <laughs> men need that. Oh, What's wrong, honey? Nothing. Asked it's mouth. Just, it's you, the vision of asked mouth in your, in your mind. Oh, God. People like to do that sometimes, so I'm just saying that's an option. If you like to do it, whatever, that's your prerogative. Take a shower, take a bath first. Yeah, take a, a, a long shower. A long shower, right. Maybe find a bidet somewhere in America. Yes, just do all those Spend things Spend like first. 10 hours in there, right. then take a shower, 
Maybe find some uh, well, the, this hand sanitizer. Put it down there. And then lick it. And then you'll lick it, anus. <laughs> no. Oh, it's my mom. Tell her I said hi. Should I get it? No. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Talk to you she later. She doesn't know that she's doing the show right now? Uh, she doesn't know. She's in Michigan. Um, okay. So that's what we got time for today. I'd like to thank Jessica Drake for being on the show. Ask the mouth. Just say no. No, just some people. I'm just saying uh, you can check out her uh, educational DVDs, her Guide to Wicked Sex, Guide to Fellatio, Guide to Anal, Guide to Positions, Guide to Wicked Sex dot com. And um, yeah, that's what I got for you. Menace, anything else you'd like to say to me? No, that's it. Okay, everyone. Thanks for, uh, you know, figuring out a way so I can't go to Michigan. It's fine. I'm whatever. sorry about that, honey. We'll still be doing shows before then. <laughs> um, and you can find me on Facebook and Twitter, Sex with Emily. You can find Menace, Why Menace, everywhere else on the planet. And mm-hmm. um, thanks, everyone, for listening to the show. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.